our previous tutorial, we had built a grid of nine buttons. And as I run that tutorial, you can see these buttons here in the grid. Now, if I stopped the tic-tac-toe tutorial right here and asked you to finish it, most of you would likely build your tic-tac-toe game by taking this simple button grid and placing a lot of logic into a single class, probably called the game class or something like that. And then you would uh, look at the labels on these buttons and compare them and try to figure out when somebody has won. The problem with this approach is that it creates a huge amount of logic in a single class, uh, which is hard to design, hard to debug, and generally hard to get working. I'm hoping in this tutorial to convince you that a much better way to do this tic-tac-toe design is to make the buttons smart and make, in fact, a custom tic-tac-toe button that has a lot of the features that we need to play a tic-tac-toe game. And the result will be that the logic that we'll have in the game board class will become much simpler, and then the entire design uh, will be much easier to work with, to fix, to change, etc. So we should begin the button design process by asking ourselves, what should the button look like? What features should it have? What capabilities should it have? Uh, we know that we want to start with a dash uh, at the beginning to suggest that the button has been unused, but what should happen when the user presses the button? What values do we want to restrict the button to having on the front? And more importantly, the labels that we're using in the front, are those the labels that we want to use internally to figure out what the state of the game or the state of an individual button is? One of the major breakthroughs you'll do in this design if you thought about it for an extended period by yourself, one that we're sort of shortcutting with this video, unfortunately, is that eventually if you thought about the problem long enough and hard enough, you'd realize that this entire design can be made significantly simpler if we assign a value to each of these buttons that's kept hidden from the user and used only for our logic purposes. What we mean by that is that on the face of the button, we'll show the labels dash, x, and o as the only values that the button can have on its front. But inside, we want to use a numerical value to represent the state of the button. The main advantage of separating what the user sees from what we see internally in the button is that it's much easier for us to compare numbers than it is to compare strings. For example, Let's say we wanted to figure out if the game was over because these three rows contain all three X's or all three O's. Yes, it's true that we could compare the strings to see if they're all X's or all O's, but consider how much easier it would be if we simply were to take three numbers and add them together to see if they reached a certain sum. I'm sure you'll agree that the latter approach makes for a much easier design. So with that in mind, let's get started by building a custom tic-tac-toe button. Here I am back inside Eclipse, and I've created a brand new class called Tic-Tac-Toe Button. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extend the JavaFX Button class. And when I extend the button, I want to make sure that I use the JavaFX uh, button and not the AWT Swing button. That's going to be important. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a private variable, which is going to be an integer, which is going to contain the button value. Let's give some thought now as to what values we want to give the button for its various states. What value do we want to assign to an unused button or a dash? What value to an X? And what value to an O? Your initial thought might be the following. You might, for example, decide to assign a value 0 to the dash, a 1 to the x, and a 2 to the o. But a little thought will convince you, hopefully, that this is not an ideal setup of values. For example, consider what would happen if we were to add the three buttons together in a row and came up with the number 3. Could we be certain that the game is over because three x's are present? Or is there some other way to get the sum of a 3? Could it not be because one of the buttons is a 0, one of the buttons is a 1, and one of the buttons is a 2? Hopefully you'll realize that this set of values is not good, going to be a good design choice for us for tic-tac-toe. Consider this alternative instead. What if we were to change the O value from a 2 to a minus 1? Now we would generate unique values when all three of the 
values in a row or a column were an O, we would get the value of minus 3. Likewise, if we added a row, column, or diagonal together and got a positive 3, we could be sure that there were all x's present along this particular column. So let's decide then and go ahead with these values for our three different labels. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create some methods that the button is going to have that can be called upon when either the button is pressed or when it's the computer's turn to move. Let's start off by writing the constructor for this tic-tac-toe button. When the button is first created, we want to show a dash on the screen. We could, for example, set the text to the button to be dash right here, but I think what we want to do instead is to create some generic set state method and call that here to set it to some initial state. So let's do that here. Now you see Eclipse is complaining that there is no set state method. We're going to write that next. In this set state method, we check the state that's given to us as a parameter. If it's set to zero, we're going to display a dash on the front of the button to indicate that it's not yet been used, and we're going to set the internal value to zero. Likewise, if we're past a state of one, we're going to show an X on the display and set the value to a 1. If we're past a negative 1, we're going to set the value to an O. If we get any other value when this set state method is called, that's going to be illegal because 0, 1, and minus 1 we have already decided are the only legal values we're going to accept. We'll simply print out an error message if that is the case. We also need to add a method that will allow the user to retrieve the current state of the button. And lastly, we want to create another method that will advance the state of the button from a blank to an X to an O, and if it's called again, back to a blank. So we want to basically create a method that will cycle through these states. We have chosen to call this method change state, and what it does is it looks at the current state of the button, which is stored in value, and then it simply advances to the next one. So it's going to go from minus 1 to 0. If it's already at 0, it'll go to 1, and if it's at 1, it'll go to minus 1. So it's going to cycle through these three different labels and three these three different values. Hopefully you can already see how, by pushing some of the intelligence into the buttons, we'll eventually be able to make the design of our tic-tac-toe game much simpler. To demonstrate the use of our newly created tic-tac-toe button, we've gone back to our demonstration with the nine grid buttons and replace the button class here with tic-tac-toe button. Of course we've had to modify the class to handle events and in the handle method we cycle through the buttons to figure out which one was pressed and we call the change state method in our tic-tac-toe button for whichever button got pressed. Note here that we've replaced all incidences of button with tic-tac-toe button. Now let's run this modified version with our tic-tac-toe button. We can see we've got our grid of nine buttons with all dashes. And now let's test out the button presses. You can see that if I press a button once, it changes from dash to X. If I press it again, it changes to an O. And if I press it again, it goes back to a dash.